Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. The fall season is coming, and the weather is getting milder with uh, decreasing temperatures. I hope you will make the most of the season in terms of uh, practice. Today, I will introduce Gong Luo Dian, an important Tai Chi practice based on a very prominent classic martial art document, Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu, the Chang Family Martial Training Manual. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is Ying Hong Jiu Hao, a famous red tea produced in Guangdong province. Almost all red teas in history were made from small or medium-sized tea leaves until about 80 years ago. Since then, big leaf species of tea trees have been grown in Yunnan province, which became the source of red tea leaves in that region. Tea manufacturers noticed the advantages of producing red tea with the big tea leaf in that province. Dian Hong, a famous red tea category produced in Yunnan province, became so successful that all of a sudden people started researching the unique flavor of a big leaf red tea. By the way, this is the comparison between big leaf and small leaf red teas. And uh, the left side is the red tea made with big leaf species. With the growing popularity of uh, Yunnan red tea, some tea scientists in Guangdong province experimented with the transplantation of uh, big leaf tea trees from Yunnan to Guangdong. Around 1961, scientists transplanted about 22 tea bushes and produced about 22 types of new red teas with the Guangdong red tea production method. Through a systematic flavor testing and survey, tea experts chose the new tea marked number 9 as the best tea. Since the tea bushes were planted in Yangde, Guangdong province, then tea scientists chose the first letter of the city name Ying and the tea category of Hong, the Chinese term for red, plus the number 9 as the name of the new tea. Ying Hong Jiu Hao came into existence. So, the literal translation of this tea is Ying Red Tea Number 9. In the Chinese tea market, there are not many teas named after the tea tree species. So, naming a tea after the tree indicates confidence in that new tea tree species. Ying Hong Jiu Hao or Ying Red Tea Number 9 has a very strong red tea flavor, a fruity and flowery fragrance. This tea is rich in tea polyphenols and other key nutrients. This tea is rich in antioxidants, lower cholesterol, maintains body weight, and even helps with prostate cancer based on medical research reports. So, this tea has not only a great flavor but also great health benefit. From the agricultural perspective, this species is easy to grow as well as tolerant to hot temperatures and different soil conditions. As a result, many regions in Guangdong started growing and producing this great red tea after finding out about it. <coughs> to brew Ying Hong Jiu Hao, 90 degrees Celsius water for 5 seconds of brewing time is optimal for the 
first five brews. In the winter time, water at 95 degrees Celsius is better to account for lower room temperature. Then, 85 degrees Celsius for 10 second brewing time for each subsequent brew after the first five brews is suitable for a better flavor. <coughs> I had a couple of cans of Ying Hong Jiu Hao. After consuming the first can, I forgot I had another can until I found it in my basement recently. This tea is a, a bit old. Normally, the red tea flavor deteriorates after about less than three years. However, this tea is uh, still flavorful after many years, like likely on account of the good quality of the tea fermentation process and uh, optimal storage conditions. By the way, some people prefer to have uh, aged red tea by choice, but not me. Take a look at the nice tea leaf. A very solid tea leaf with nice color. <clears throat> now, let's look at the tea decoction. Very beautiful color and a strong red tea fragrance. No wonder this tea is expensive. I hope you will enjoy this tea. Do let me know your experience with Ying Hong Jiu Hao. Ying Red Tea Number 9. Now, let's get on with today's main topic, Gang Luo Dian. Topics covered in today's video include first, life and the works of Chang Nai Zhou. Second, Rou Guo Qi, Gang Luo Dian, Tai Qi and Gang Rou. Third, practice of Rou Guo Qi. Gang Luo Dian. First, principle of Rou Guo Qi. Gang Luo Dian. Fifth, misperception of Rou Guo Qi. Gang Luo Dian. Sixth, demonstration. Seventh, correction of a student's practice. And eighth, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Chang Nai Zhou and his contribution. In the process of learning martial arts theory, classic training manuals, and the works of important martial arts figures are some of the key factors in understanding the development and the evolution of the art. Chang Nai Zhou, who lived from 1924 to 1983, was the original author of Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu, or Chang Family Martial Training Manual. Unfortunately, his name is not well known in the Chinese martial art community. I have talked about him briefly in prior videos, such as the one titled Internal Style Concepts No. 6 Gang and Rou. I'd like to provide more details about him today. Chang Nai Zhou, a descendant of the Ming military official Chang Shouzhong, was born in Sisui, Henan Province. He studied literature and also underwent military training, achieved success in both. Instead of investing further time in studying literature, he dedicated his whole life to studying martial arts. Chinese medicine, Yi Jing, and Xiu Dao practice. After decades of hard work, he wrote many martial art documents, which were eventually compiled into the famous Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu or Chang Family Martial Training Manual, a six volume document collection covering many advanced topics of both internal and external style martial arts. This document not only covers martial art training theory, but also specific training method. Even today, some people still practice 
尝试武技 of the Chang family martial art in China, even though it is not popular, unfortunately. His work is considered the most important martial art training document of his time. Even today, many of the contents are still very relevant. If someone is looking for ancient concepts about internal style practice, this book is a must read since many concepts and theories used in all three internal styles of martial arts can be traced back to this book. The relevance of Chang Nai Zhou's work is so broad that after reading his book, Tai Chi practitioners might think Chang Nai Zhou used to practice Tai Chi, well, Xing Yi practitioners might think he practiced Xing Yi. Even more interesting, since one of his main teachers was the Shaolin expert. Shaolin practitioners today might assume this book to be intended for Shaolin training after reading it. The reason is very simple. This book introduces some fundamental concepts and practices of internal as well as external martial arts. By the way, Sishui, the area where he was born, is not far from the Shaolin Temple and is actually even closer to the Chen village. So, recently, some people in the Chen style Tai Chi community claimed that Chang Mai Zhou learned Tai Chi in Chen village without providing any evidence. Their argument was that Chang Nai Zhou's concept could be used in Tai Chi practice, and some of his content were, was similar to that of Chen style Tai Chi in terms of applications of theories. Speaking from the research of other experts as well as my own, I believe this claim cannot hold any water. Actually, Chang Nai Zhou's theory is a lot more developed and profound than any Tai Chi concept and theory published and recorded during or before his time. At the most, he may have visited the Chen village, but in no way does it imply that his martial art practice was influenced by the Chen village. Practitioners from other styles often try to claim a historical figure as their own when the said historical figure gets recognized. Unfortunately, but true. Even in the West, we have to prevent this issue from happening. Chang Nai Zhou dedicated his entire life to producing the Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu an outstanding martial art training document, which has had a great impact on both internal and external martial art training not only for his contemporaries, but more and more nowadays. A truly timeless classic. So, what is the most commonly used concept developed by Chang Nai Zhou applied in Tai Chi practice. That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2. Rou Guo Qi, Gang Guo Dian, Tai Chi and Gang Rou. Before moving to the application of Chang Nai Zhou's concept to Tai Chi practice, let's talk about his concept first. There are many important theories and concepts in his book that can be used to guide Tai Chi practice. Rou Guo Qi, Gang Luo Dian, is one of them. Today, I'd like to focus on and explain it. So, what is Rou Guo Qi, Gang Luo Dian? This proverb is found in the first volume of that book. Chang Nai Zhou talked about his concept in the Chapter titled Guo Qi Lun or 
discussion of、uh, transferring energy. Rou means relaxed or flexible. Guo means moving or transferring. Qi means energy, power. Gang means strong, solid. Luo means dropping, striking. Dian means point. Put together, it means that when transferring energy, it should be flexible and relaxed, while the structure and the power should be solid and strong when reaching the striking point. Chang Nai Zhou said, "Quote: 落点坚硬，勇猛莫敌，赖全身之气。”近距一处也，然有用之而气不去，气去而牵扯不利，谓之过气之法也。盖人身气之发，发于命门，气之源也，注于四末，气之助也。而流行之道路，总要无庸滞，无牵扯，方能来去流利，结辨莫测。End quote. Translation. When striking on a specific point, the power should be solid and strong, so that the opponent cannot defend itself. It depends on the ability to gather the energy and strength of the whole body and apply them to that point. However, sometimes the movement reaches the point, but energy does not reach it. Oh, it seems that energy arrives, but the body cannot reach it smoothly. Both situations are caused by the ignorance of the practice of transferring energy. In general, our energy is from the Mingmen or Vital Gate, an area of the lower back, which is the source of energy. Then, energy extends to limbs. Which is the injection of energy. As for the path for energy circulation, there should be neither blockage nor restriction in order to move freely and effectively. So the movement is fast and hard to predict. End the translation. What Chang Nai Zhou mentioned here is the relationship between solid power. And smooth energy transfer. In other words, energy should be strong and solid when striking, while it should be flexible and relaxed when transferring. Energy should be flexible and relaxed. That is how Gang, the solid, the strong, and Rou, the flexible, the relaxed, should be handled. Based on the writing, Gang and Rou do not mean hard and soft. Gang and Rou are dynamic in nature, describing different martial training movements for self-defense and combat purposes. Chang Nai Zhou also said in the same chapter of his book, "Quote." 落尽处，尽是气聚血凝，指归之所，亦用刚法。耳尖、咽、肩阳，是气血流利，亦用柔法。End quote. Translation: The place where energy strikes and drops is the ending place where energy and blood. Gather together, so the Gang method should be applied. But the state between Yin and Yang is for blood and energy circulation, so the Rou method should be applied. End translation. Now let's talk about its application in Tai Chi practice. Rou Guo Qi, Gang Luo Dian, can explain. The concept of Gang Rou, or solid, strong, and flexible, relaxed during both Tai Chi form 
and application. Very well. In a prior video titled Internal Style Concept Number 6, Gang and Rou, I explained when and how to apply Gang and Rou in Tai Chi practice. Link is in the description. Basically, Gang and Rou are a pair of opposite but closely related terms that have to be handled correctly, or else the practice would be either stiff or sloppy, which goes against the Tai Chi principle. So, every Tai Chi practitioner must observe variations in the levels of strength, speed, and focus in both form and combat practice in order to practice Tai Chi as originally intended, or else it would not be considered Tai Chi. So, Rou Guo Qi, Gang Luo Dian, an ancient martial art concept, can be used to explain Gang and Rou, which is one of the most difficult terms in Tai Chi study in a dynamic approach, making Chang Nai Zhou's concept much more practical in terms of guiding a practitioner to improve Tai Chi skills. By the way, in recent years, some Tai Chi experts in China use this proverb to explain Tai Chi practice without mentioning its origin, also to make it even more interesting. Some of them even changed the original proverb, for example, Rou Guo Jin, Gang Luo Dian. The translation remains the same even though the original word Qi or energy got changed to Jin or power. Again, there was no such proverb in any Tai Chi classics before Chang Nai Zhou's document, and this proverb is rather a new invention that was in fact Chang Nai Zhou's writing in slightly different words, giving one's audience the impression that it was their Tai Chi style that created this term with the full knowledge of it being borrowed from Chang Nai Zhou. It's just plain dishonesty. So, how should you actually practice Rou Guo Qi, Gang Luo Dian? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3 Practice of Rou Guo Qi, Gang Luo Dian. That proverb can be used as a guiding principle of Tai Chi in terms of managing Gang and Rou. However, in Tai Chi practice, this proverb is more suitable to develop Tai Chi's internal power. As mentioned before, internal power is an integration of strength, speed, timing, angle, and experience, among other factors. So, Paying special attention to the application of this proverb by managing every single detail of each movement can help strengthen internal power. Maintaining a relaxed and flexible body structure is key to circulating Tai Chi energy without blockage. The objective of a relaxed and flexible approach is also to ensure that the smooth transfer of energy from the Dantian area to the limbs or other body parts. So, the first part of the proverb, Rou Guo Qi, emphasizes that real relaxation is necessary to generate strong martial power that can be transferred to the ends of the limbs in a self-defense or combat situation. That is the key aspect of a Tai Chi practice. The second part of uh, the proverb, Gang Luo Dian, expresses the importance of uh, power concentration and uh, coordination. In a combat situation, the Tai Chi power should penetrate the opponents through the area of uh, contact. Concentrating the whole body force at a specific point requires 
physical and the mental coordination during the whole body movement. To reach this level, you need to not only intensify your physical martial strength, but also need to focus on timing, which requires long-term intentional practice. With time, every part of the body should be able to alter its strength according to its intended application. In other words, when the energy needs to be flexible and relaxed, it is actually the time to improve the energy flow. When the energy needs to be solid and strong, it is actually the time to intensify Tai Chi power so that you will be ready to execute the Tai Chi power release or Fa Jin. Effective handling of Gang and Rou is essential for using Tai Chi in a self defense or combat situation. The ability to execute power releases is the key element that makes the Tai Chi a martial art. Lack of that ability renders one's practice just another performance art. Therefore, make sure to pay attention to Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Lian in your daily Tai Chi practice. I cannot emphasize this enough. Now, let's look at an important relevant principle in the next topic. Topic 4 Principle of Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Lian. Chang Nai Zhou's book contains many important discussions, some of which can be considered further explanations of important principles of this proverb. In today's video, I'd like to introduce one of them, which will help you understand this proverb better. In the fifth volumes of his book, Chang Nai Zhou said, quote, Shi Wu San Dian Bu Luo, Tou Shou Jiao, Bi San Dian Fang Luo Dian, Qi Wu San Chui Bu Zhi, Bu Zhi San Chui Mo Zhu Shou Xin Qi Shen. End quote. Translation Any posture should not strike without reaching the coordination of three points, including the head, hand, and foot. Only strike when all three factors meet together. Energy will not reach its place without three pushes. The strike should not be executed without the readiness of three pushes, mind, energy, and spirit. End translation. Again, this principle emphasizes the importance of coordination between the three external factors, the head, the hands, and the feet, as well as the three external factors, mind, energy, and spirit. It also emphasizes that the time to execute the martial power or luo dian is when different factors, both internal and external, are integrated into one. While pushing energy through different body parts under the guidance of a mental action to reach the right body parts. A great way to express the importance of the whole body work. Classic Chinese martial documents always use concise and meaningful ways to re record training experiences. That's why there are many wonderful discussions about Gang and the Rou aspects in this document. These documents can actually go on a lot longer, which I will save for future videos. Now, let's debunk an important misperception about handling Gang and the Rou in Tai Chi practice in the next topic. Topic 5 Misperception of Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian. Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian has not been well known in the community, at least so far. However, since it is related to Tai Chi practice, misperceptions still occur when working on Gang and Rou. 
especially in the context of uh, speed. Some people believe that since Tai Chi formal practice is normally slow, there is no way to apply Gang Luo Dian, the second part of the proverb, which let me translate again, means power should be solid and strong when reaching the striking point. Let me debunk this misperception today. When you practice Tai Chi in slow motion, it may seem like there is no place to add strength and solidity in your formal practice. Well, that is just not true. In the Tai Chi routine, certain points are good for power release when done fast. These same points should have added strength when practiced in slow motion. The variation of the level of strength in a certain body area still reflects the concept of Gang Luo Dian. At the same time, when physical body parts are slightly intensified, mental activity should coordinate with it as well. Externally, there may be no noticeable difference, but internally, the practitioner will be transformed. Furthermore, this method is a great way to improve internal power. I'd like to specifically point out that this misperception of a Tai Chi power, especially the misperception of the practice of a Tai Chi power used for a self-defense situation has been prevalent for decades in both China and outside. However, the situation has been improving due to dissemination and the clarification by great Tai Chi practitioners. Let's keep working on it. I highly recommend you adopt this method and alter your strength when practicing Tai Chi to correctly observe Gang and Rou. I'm sure you will notice the improvement with time. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I will demonstrate the Tai Chi single whip is to express the Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian in a slow motion movement. Hello, single whip for Rou Guo Qi Gang Luo Dian. Topic 7 Correction of a Student's Practice. Okay, now let my students demonstrate one of the movements from the second routine of the Chen style, the Cannon Fist. The name of the movement is the Zhuan Shen Liu He. Translation is the turning the body in six harmony or turning the body with six harmony. So you start from here. One. Two, then three. Now you turn 90 degrees face to the camera and repeat from here. Okay, now please move to the center. Let, let me correct his uh, movement. Okay, first of all, from here. So that is the defensive posture, and uh, here should face this side more. Second, the weight should put more on the, the leg. So, one, for example, one here, I'm pumping, right? So, move like this. One. Right now, go back. Yes, to here. Then the elbow extend, relax the chest, round the bike. Body maintain the straight posture. Straight posture. Yes. And then extend the chest, knee pushes. Then extend the chest to then turn. Now you turn to face. No face to here now. Then and so this posture. The fist at over the knee. Second knee moved higher. Relax the foot, and then relax the chest around the bike. Bend the the left leg. Yes. Then step. Then move up the other leg. Sink down. Then step. Shift the weight. Then elbow extend inward. Fist move up. Then turn. Now to look forward. 
and then look, look forward first, then continue, look at here. Then when you finish, bend here in order to strengthen this area. And uh, here the same thing, elbow downward, here, upward. Look toward here. Elbow downward, knee pushes forward. Then here, move, uh, move back a little bit. Then exhale. Very good, thank you. Topic eight, takeaways. First, Chang Nai Zhou was the author of the Chang Shi Wu Ji Shu, an outstanding and prominent martial art training document, which has had a great impact on both internal and external martial art training. Second, Gang and Rou are a pair of opposite but closely related terms that have to be handled correctly, or else the practice would be either stiff or sloppy. 3. Every Tai Chi practitioner must observe variation in the levels of strength, speed, and focus in both form and combat practice in order to practice Tai Chi as originally intended. 4. Maintaining a relaxed and flexible body structure is the key to circulating Tai Chi energy without blockage. Fifth, concentrating the whole body force at a specific point in self-defense requires physical and mental coordination during the whole body movements. Six, coordination between the three external factors the head, the hand, and the feet, as well as the three internal factors, mind, energy, and spirit, is important. The right time to execute the martial power is when different factors, both internal and external, are integrated into one. Seventh, some people believe that since Tai Chi formal practice is normally slow, there is no way to apply Gang Luo Dian. Remember, that is the misperception. Even in slow motion practice, you can and should add strength at certain points such that you can execute the power release in the fast version. Make sure to check out the demonstration and the student's correction sections to get a more visual idea of Gang Rou practice. That concludes today's video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.